proof that I really am the person in the picture. Here we there go. you go. Yeah, so I'm uh, Steve Campbell. I'm a uh, senior data and AI consultant at Concurrency. Um, you know, Milwaukee based Rouse and Brookfield based um, consultancy. I'm also run a, a Power BI course at uh, University of Wisconsin Milwaukee. Um, we actually have our, our first class next month, which is all going to be online. Done a lot of Power BI teaching. I'm definitely a Power BI guy. That's my my tool. I've been using Power BI pretty much since it came out five years ago. Been in it a lot. And that's the area of my focus. Um, a lot of this before, I've done stuff in Azure, you know, doing data factory, moving data, modeling. I'd say Power BI side, I'm definitely more, more the data, data modeling, that kind of stuff. And then a little fun fact here, yeah, I'm obviously from the UK, so I lived there. <laughs> I lived for a year in Australia, and I've also lived for the past eight years here in Milwaukee. So been around uh, some different areas, and it's been cool, it's been traveled a lot. And then definitely please add me on social media. Uh, LinkedIn is, is what I use the most. Um, here, LinkedIn and Twitter, you know, Power BI Steve, you can tell I'm a Power BI guy. And then I also blog on powerbi.tips. Um, for those unfamiliar, it's a, it's a really great website for Power BI tips. As you say, a lot of the tools out there as well. You've just released Business Ops Beta, which is a tool to um, extend Power BI for external tools. And I've got a call to external tool out there. So you can see all of that. If you head over to Power BI tips, um, you'll be able to find me on there if you can't remember the whole URL. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Yeah. All right. Change gears. There we go. My name is Anthony Escobedo. I'm a technical architect. Uh, I've been doing this for just about five years and I've been doing IT for about eight. So been, uh, you know, having a lot of fun and continue to have fun in, in, the, in the different realms here. So Power Platform, Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, you know, things of that nature, you know, everything around SharePoint, everything around Power Platform is, is kind of where uh, I've spent a lot of my time. Um, I say travel is key because, you know, just getting to know different people, you know, I, I think uh, Steve just being a part of our, our group here, it's awesome to have, you know, uh, his accent and his, you know, personality in our group and being able to add that in. And um, not only that, it's, you know, just being able to, to get out and, and see how other people work. So, you know, when it comes to like the power addicts around the world where you're working with people through, you know, Twitter or LinkedIn and you're having those conversations, their personalities really come out. And uh, it's it's actually, uh, it's a great thing to, to be able to, to meet some of these people face to face. So, uh, you know, I've been to Cuba and Costa Rica. Uh, Bali and, and other areas of Europe and you know one place I haven't been to is the UK so Steve maybe I should just get a cheap flight out there and you know take up half the plane for myself like uh, the flights are now so maybe that would be worth it. A little hard to travel right now but soon. Yeah yeah you make room for me right? <laughs> of course. Uh, perfect and then you can see here yeah please add us on LinkedIn um, and Twitter, uh, those are our two spots there. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm huge into both of them. And, and I try to post as much as possible, especially when there's, you know, tools deprecating or new, new tools coming out, um, how I use tools and how it's successful for clients. So just trying to, you know, bring that about so that um, it can be as available as possible for other people too. So as I learn things, I like to share that. And I would uh, definitely encourage you guys to do the same. Uh, feel free to, uh, and actually I got, I got a message just today or yesterday asking about, you know, how, are there any tips and tricks, you know, on this certain subject? And, uh, you know, I, I said, sure, I'll get back to you early next week. And, you know, we're going to, you know, set up some time to, you know, talk through that. And it's just as simple as that is just reaching out to some of these people, whether they're local or farther away. But I mean, the worst thing you can get is no. So uh, certainly asking and, and just kind of putting yourself out there uh, on Twitter. You know, I'll do a little bit of personal things on there, too. I have uh, I have two kids um, and uh, the my youngest just turned one, so it's it's really exciting and, and kind of going through that with them. But you'll see some family things that pop up on Twitter too, so you'll you'll see a little bit more of a personal side of me on there. But um, the majority of things are are professional and around Power Platform and just kind of the, the the fun, smaller, less bloggy type of posts are on Twitter. So something you can find there. And then on my personal website, 
uh, it's just a spot for me to, you know, expand on some of these, you know, longer topics. If I solved the problem that I didn't find any, you know, anywhere else, uh, you know, I just, I'll put it out there. Um, one of them being, you know, an on-prem gateways and being able to walk somebody through, you know, how to connect to that, you know, what it means to connect and, you know, how to reuse connections. And it was like this big thing that spent a little bit of time doing, and I wanted to make sure that we could share that along with, you know, other people. And there's a couple else, other ones that are out there and I'll continue to post there as, uh, you know, there's more topics. So, I'm certainly going to, I can see myself posting a lot more in the upcoming months, you know, especially with this user group, just kind of seeing more of the things that people are running into and being able to help solve those problems. So as we dive into the demo today, uh, we're going to show a little bit about Power BI, a little bit about Power Apps, and then, you know, just a simple notification in Power Automate and how all of these, uh, you know, work together. Great. So, you know, the topic of today is Power BI, Power Apps, Power Automate, kind of better together. We really want to show this uniform product here and, and how we can use everything together. So let me pull up this Power BI report I have. This is a report I've made. Um, one thing that's really great about Power BI, you know, really good at, at viewing your information, looking at historical information. Natively, there's no real write back for Power BI. You can't insert data. There's nowhere to really say, hey, I want to change this. I want to add notes, something like that. So on its own, you can't do this. But using the tools together, we can actually make one product where we use a Power BI, a Power App, and a Flow. Uh, you know, Power Automate to really have some data. So looking at this, this is just some some fake data. You'll probably see this data set a lot. We've got um, my my fake company here, which has different um, stuff we sell here. We can have some consulting. We can see inside our consulting, we have different products that we consult on, very varied, and do a lot of different consulting for different things. Now down the bottom, we have our forecast. You can see that this dark blue is actually our forecast and the green is the, the historical sales. Now this forecast is you know, powered behind, we've, we've got our data scientists here, we do some machine learning to kind of try and predict our sales. However, one thing with forecasts is that we actually sometimes want some input from the salespeople. Our AI is good, but sometimes I want to let our salespeople make adjustments. Maybe they know something, that hasn't been picked up in our models. For example, they know maybe one of the stores has just closed down or a customer's gonna have a business. Something that's gonna really affect, you know, some, some sales and isn't picked up by the model. So we, we really wanted to include a way on how we can write this back into the data and have our salespeople who are looking at the data be able to, to add notes and adjust things on the fly. So to do that, we're actually going to be using a, a Power App. So this visual here, I'll kind of show you how it works first and we'll run through how we make it. This visual right here on the right, this is a, this is a Power App. So in your visualization pane in Power BI, we have the ability to, to include a Power App. It's a native visual. Good old Kate. <laughs> <laughs> Kate's our favorite person everywhere, so that's a, that's a great name. Here we go. So we have an option here where she's got a, we, she's got a sale here, 2020 20, 10, where we forecasted she's going to make some sales here. You know, it doesn't do a lot of Power BI, but has, has a few months here with a forecast. So I'm going to say, you know what? In October of 2010, I actually think that this forecast might be a bit off. I want to make an adjustment. So by clicking on the, on the month, I can actually interact with this power app and say, I think this is going to actually be, you know, I'm only going to sell 80% of what I've been forecasted. I'm going to say, you know, power BI slow this month, customer out of busyness. What I can do is that this is now going to commit and I'm going to write this directly back into our source data system. So now, once I make, once I refresh this data source, I'm going to see here 
So now we've actually adjusted this bar. So the original forecast was the dot. We've now had the adjusted forecast down to 80% of what we thought. Now this is a right back. This is, this is pretty cool stuff um, on how to do this and write this right back to the source system. So we're live updating data. We're able to make adjustments on the data we see. Now in order to do this, we have to go to Power App and connect it to Power BI. So here, I'm just going to duplicate here. We kind of know Power App. And we'll run through the steps of how we do this. So the first thing we're going to do is just add the Power App visual. We can see here it works just like any other visual where we can resize it and we can add data. So it asks, it only has one field to, to kind of input here. And it asks, what Power App's data would you like to input? So I'm going to put, you know, the salesperson. I want to put from my date table, our year month, which is the, um, the, the, the date that it happened. And then I also want to put the product ID. These are the bits of information I'm going to pass to Paras. Now you can see it's tried to do a count because it's easy with numeric. I'm going to say don't summarize because I don't want the count of these. I just want the actual values. So now these are the three bits of, of data that I'm going to pass to Power Apps that it's going to use to write back to a source system. Once I hit create new, I'm going to say I want to build a new Power App. Now it says almost done. You know, um, we get to choose what tenant we're in. And it says we're going to take you to Power Apps. I'm going to click go to Power App Studio. It's going to give me this very long URL that it likes to write out and say I'm going to take you here so that you can build your Power App. So I'm going to click OK. If only those links were <laughs> actually legible. Right. So um, I mean, I'm in my test environment here, but this is the point now. I'm going to pass over to Anthony, and he's going to—he's the Power App specialist, and he's going to show you how we can use this information and build a Power App from the information I've just passed from Power BI. Let's jump over to the actual app here. So one thing I didn't do a great job of is as I was putting some of these things together is naming my labels, my images, buttons and so forth. Um, typically, I don't really go in and, and rename those unless they're being used in other areas. Um, actually, a lot of these are being used in other areas, so um, I could have went back and did that, but just it being for demo purposes and, and doing it pretty quickly, um, I, I, I was able to not I was able to get by without putting a, a bow on it. So um, let's let's dive through that really quickly here. So here's your Power BI integration. You're going to be able to see that um, anytime you have an app that's going to be created by a Power BI report, it's going to automatically default that you're going to be using that data source. So that's where that comes in. It doesn't allow you to take that out. It doesn't give you the option to do anything really with it, um, but it does add that as you know one of your data sources for, for an app. All right, let me see here. I should change the screen there. I was seeing if that would help, but it did not. However, um, here is a label. I just you know typed in some information there, changed the the font and the the, the weight of it. You know we're from uh, you know from Milwaukee, so I added in uh, you know art museum. I thought that was kind of fancy, but uh, being able to add images and things like that, making it more personable, I think is you know a huge piece that sometimes we miss out on if we're using the out of the box you know forms and such. So being able to just add that small bit of personality to an app is, is helpful. Um, then here's the button right below. Uh, it, you know, that's basically going to bring us to the next screen. I like to have a home page on, on the majority of my apps, depending on what you're doing. I know uh, Steve and I in the, in the past have, have foregone the, using a, a home screen, but um, in this case I did. So let's go over to the add new screen. This is the one that everybody's familiar with. So let me click on that. Um, one thing that you're seeing here is there's a, a pretty small but lengthy, uh, you know, query that we're seeing here. So here's that Power BI uh, integration dot data that's going to be pulling up through that information. Anything that you're clicking on on that report, you're going to be able to see, you know, by pulling in the information by using that data source and calling it. So what I'm specifically looking at here is the the year and month. So that's what I'm pulling through. It actually comes through as a year and a month. So let me just go back to that Power BI report to show you that. So you can see here that there's 2020 and then the month is at the end. So the way that I'm going to you know, extract that information is saying, give me everything to the left, but only the four characters. Let's only display that. 
So that's what you're going to see there. Same thing with a month. Now pull everything from the right and only show me those two characters. So that again, just kind of you know further explaining some of those queries that you may have to do to help you know display that data in an end user centric way. Uh, our notes. So again, you saw me type in some notes. That's just you know our, our area is I like to say as a catch all. Um, usually I have notes on a lot of my apps. Um, may or may not be best practices. I haven't really heard anybody talk about that much. But what I like to do from a, I don't know, this is my Lean Six Sigma hat, where I like to understand how people are using the app. And if they're going to use it any which way that's possible, great. But what I'll start to be able to do is start to categorize on how they're actually using my app based on their input. So um, being able to see, you know, that they're categorizing it a certain way, I can start to, you know, formalize a plan to maybe add another input, put a category on here, put a subcategory on here, or make, you know, adjustments based on, you know, the information that they're putting in there. Again, then down here below is going to be our, uh, you know, slider bar. So if I were to hold down uh, Alt, I can then use it like I would otherwise, but being able to drag and drop that. So I did adjust that a little bit to make that, that bubble a little bit bigger, you know, making it easier on the end user again, of course. And then here's my, my admin panel. So if I click on that, it's going to show, you know, those that information. So again, just being really high level here, it, it really helps, you know, drive, you know, that, that uh, admin side of things. Sometimes it's just a validation check. Is it going to pull through my information that I want it to? Is it going to submit the information that I want it to? So that just kind of brings in some more insight to that admin that uh, so those end users may not care about. So if I have submit here, you can kind of see what I did here. Uh, I'm just basically pulling in a, a collect. Uh, I'm, I'm su uh, submitting it to my data list. And then here are is the list title. And here's some of that other information that I'm, I'm pulling in from the actual app itself. And that's where it's going to be stored. So then when I click on that, I want to navigate out to my confirmation page. That's where I was talking about when it kind of looks like a receipt. Same thing here, then we're going to be, you know, setting this up and, uh, you know, resetting this once we're ready. So now just to go to the confirmation page. Again, we just have a label up here. And what I did that's different here is I, I basically just pulled in exactly what I was, uh, you know, displaying on the other page. Instead of having to formulate the, the properties twice, I wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, it's very consistent. And in addition here, if you guys caught that, if you guys are, or saw that earlier, this only went to, uh, to 100 and it was supposed to go to 200. So you can see how I changed that. Uh, very simple. Um, and now I'm just going to drag and drop that as if I were using it. If it lets me. Eh, it's not going to let me right now. It's it's because I'm presenting, of course. So, but in other case, you can see that there's, you know, some length here on the right that's going above 100. So I made that, that quick change. Um, then my button here is just navigating me back to that, that uh, add new screen. So if I wanted to publish this, then you just go to file, save. Wait a moment here, of course, and then publish. And this usually goes pretty quick. We'll allow that to spin. Click back. So now that is going to show up here in my uh, data report. But one other thing I wanted to show you really quickly is the flow. Uh, so here you can see that when an item is created, do something and it's storing that information back to a list. Um, get the, the current profile of the person that's submitting that information and now use some of that information in here. But then also call out, you know, like we talked about with that receipt, you know, be able to, um, you know, really pass along that information so that they have that in their records that they made a change. Um, and again, here's that that information about notifying your administrator. Typically, you'd have you know something like an email there to for them to copy it and, and paste into an email. Um, but in either case, you know that that being the flow. So as you can tell, it's pretty simplistic. Um, if you're not a coder, it's it's still something that was plug and play from like the title perspective. Um, I can do a quick one of those. I'm just going to add a title really quick here, so you can see how what that looked like. So I'm going to I'm going to type in title just so I you know refine what is being shown. So when a new item is added, or sorry, created, that's what's you know being called here. You know that because uh, when we're able to pull in the title and it's to the data source because that's what's being pulled in there. So I know that that's the correct one. I'm going to click on title and it just pops it right in. So again, that's a low code, no code, very simplistic. Um, you know, uh, Microsoft Automate. All right, so if I were to save that, it would it would save it, and then anything that goes on beyond that is going to pick up those latest changes. 
just to give you some insight really quickly, this is where it's being stored and being adjusted. So this is where you're going to see that capture. So typically we could have you know, a bunch more pieces of metadata here if we wanted, uh, but for demo purposes, just keeping that simplistic. So now that you saw all the working pieces, refresh here real quick. And as you can tell, I'm a tab guy, a million tabs. <laughs> All right, we'll let this load and you'll see this load. I got my thumbs up that'll pop up here in a moment. All right, I uh, only got a second of it. So, uh, and, and this is not gonna show unless you click on something. So you're gonna see me click on this and then it'll show. So now here, I'm gonna go to 200. It's gonna show me my 200 in a moment. I'm just typing in some yada yada, click the checkbox. And now you can see that 200 and that change that came through. The key part here is that, you know, the, it's the, the data that he already has stored and is visualizing here in Power BI. Um, and, and he did such a great job <laughs> uh, visualizing that, that information and being able to talk through that. I actually learned a little bit during that, that uh, small discussion there. So thanks, Steve. Um, but outside of that, when you have a Power App and you have data and you want to, you know, be able to visualize that, whether it's um, at the same time or it's, you know, pulling pieces out to visualize it differently, you know, that's where that Power App can really, you know, it, it can provide the interactive um, side of things where, you know, an end user coming to this, you know, they don't have to leave the Power, you know, PR, Power BI report in order to actually use that information. They can just stay right here. You can put the Power App on there as an embedded feature. And, uh, you know, you can uh, basically allow it to, to do everything in one screen. So I think that's really the big thing of, you know, what's how we're going to do productivity going forward. You know, we see, uh, you know, Power BI and Power Apps working really well together. We see Teams and Power App and Power BI working together really well. That's enough. So when I click on, you know, new adjustment, so I could, you know, click on some other information that's in here and, you know, you know move around some information and we'll show that in a moment. So I'm going to click on add new adjustment. So that brought me to a screen. You can see 2017 is the year and then month is January. So if I were to kind of click around, we're going to be able to see, you know, some of that information changing. If, uh, if the demo gods want to work with me here, you can see that, you know, some of that information is changing around. So we have 2019 kind of bopping around a little bit, 2020 and 11. You can see how it's interacting with the actual report itself and how the, the Power app is able to pull in the information that the Power BI has made accessible. So one thing that's really great is that when you're in Power BI and when you're in the Power app, if you have permissions to view Power BI, that means that you have permissions to view the data on the back end. So the, the great thing here that you're seeing is that this Power App is actually using the information from the Power BI, you know, parts itself, and it's not actually connecting to the database on the back end. So that's that's one great thing is that it's all stored within this, you know, this web front that it's passing these variables through, and it's being being able to do that, you know, very seamless. And I think that that's one really important thing that we're seeing here is that. You know, Power Apps isn't connecting to the back end data source and then finding out which one's selected on here and you know doing some type of matchup. Um, what we're seeing here is 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 great because you know we're we're able to pass that information again, you know, right from Power BI to Power Apps, and it doesn't have to do these these uh, heavy calculations to find those types of things out. So as you're seeing here, I'm just clicking around and you're able to see those numbers change, uh, which is great. Um, let's just click on one here. I'm going to click on planning. So it brings up the year 2019-01, and let's just say that, you know, we know that it's, you know, the adjustment here is going to be a little bit different than it was before uh, for whatever reason, you know, there's uh, an economic reason. So let's say, you know, these guys, uh, they're going to be selling, you know, uh, sanitation wipes. You know, right now, I'm sure that those are through the roof. So let's just, uh, I'm going to type something in here just as a note. All right, I'm going to make an adjustment. I'm going to say 200%. There we go. And then I'm going to hit the, the checkbox here. 
so now you can kind of see you can kind of see what happened here thank you for your submission and then it kind of shows that information down below um, one thing that i'm able to do is i added in you know a a button here where it's going to allow me now to go back and make another adjustment so i'm on this report i made an adjustment but i want to do that again you know i i only did the one and i have you know a couple to go through and i don't want to you know keep opening up the the, the dashboard here so Let's go in and make another adjustment just so we have that. So again, you know, here's the planning one. Let's let's just change to fundraising. Let's say that that's going to go down a little bit. I just heard a little ding, and that's just let me know that that Power Automate had uh, you know finished up. So one second here. So I'm going to let you. Uh, I'm going to share my screen here and uh, you know have my video on so you guys can see me wave my hands around. I talk a lot with my hands. <laughs> so uh, so in the notes then you can see I added notes and then I'm going to make an adjustment here. I'm going to say you know it's going to be down 44% based on you know my current findings. I'm going to hit the checkbox again. So you can kind of see that it kind of gives you like that receipt wheel. Just says hey this is kind of what's going on. This is how uh, you know this is what you submitted and uh, this is what you'll see in your inbox. So I'm going to go ahead and go to my inbox. So from a Power Automate perspective, now you can see that there's been some things that have changed. So you can see here that, hi, Steven, a new adjustment item has been added. And then here's the details. So product name, you know, 1006, salesperson, my ID, the adjustment, 80, and then, you know, and so forth. So the, the year and the, and the month. Um, but being able to go through uh, just if, I think this is what I put in there by default. It's just something that I've always done. Uh, but being able to have something out there so that you can call out, it's a better user experience. Um, typically, I would have an email in there that would allow, you know, somebody to contact somebody to say, hey, you know, I don't think that I was supposed to have this confidential information. So uh, certainly, you know, keeping an eye uh, on, on that and being able to allow your end users to, you know, work with whoever had created this, this workflow or, you know, working with the data. Um, if there is, you know, data that's being escaped here, we want to make sure that we can see that. So this was from an earlier one when Steve had ran through it. Here's the one that I first did, and you can see the 200 there. And here's the one that I did uh, as a second round. So you can kind of see some of those numbers come through. Um, as you could tell, you know, Power Automate, it's not an instant thing. It, you know, it'll take 10 to 30 seconds. You know, that's something that to be expected. So now that you saw the Power Automate there, um, I'm going to go back to the actual report. And now I'm going to pass the, the ball back to, to Steve, and he can do his wrap up here. Thanks a lot there. I just sent Steve? myself on live, so let me get, let me get that off. Yeah. Thank you. Here we go. I've got my screen again now. So yeah, it's really good. A lot of information, I think, here. So I really want to just kind of summarize everything we've done here. Let's talk about all these different moving pieces. So really, what have, we, what have we done here? We started off with some data in a dashboard. We then you know, built in this Power App, and we passed a few bits of information into this Power App directly from the dashboard. So I've got here, again, you know, we can filter the, the information here, just like we would with any other Power BI visual. It will filter the data that's being passed to the power. For example, I've got here, you know, we're named for our salesperson is an ad. Again, if we had row level security, that would work in the same way. And this would filter the information and pass the filtered information, you know, to our row level security through to the power. So our users couldn't be adjusting other people's forecasts. I'm going to drill down into retail and put a filter here. Now I'm going to say, my product I think I'm going to pick is, is going to be banana here. So as ant, I'm saying, you know, I'm, I'm filtering the salesperson's ant, the product of banana, passing that through, and I'm going to select a month that I really want to filter here, 2011. I'm going to make my adjustment. I actually, you know what, I think I'm going to go 30% and say Donkey Kong on the Loose stole all my bananas. Now, this is something that our AI um, recognition, our AI forecasting didn't pick up. You didn't realize Donkey Kong was getting loose and stole our bananas. So we have a supply issue, and I really want to adjust this. 
Now, what actually happens when I press this button is that as Anthony designed this power app, it's going to save this information into, the, into an adjustments table. And once I refresh this adjustments table, we're going to see that this bar went down and I can hover over and I can see, you know, I put a little tool tip here and said, we've had an adjustment because we think our forecasting, you know, models are good, but it can't capture everything. So our salesperson Ant has gone in here and said, in November, Donkey Kong's on the loose and he sold all my bananas. So I'm not going to be able to sell as many bananas here. I made an adjustment of, you know, down to 30%. So this is this is um, very powerful stuff, and I want to just kind of go over a bit of um, architecture here and show exactly how this is working. So really, what's happening with all these products? How are they interacting? How is it writing back to the data source? So what we have is we have our different data sources. We in our case, we used um, some, some machine learning. This could be a machine learning model for our forecast. We had some information in our databases about the sales we've recorded. And we've also been using a SharePoint to hold an adjustments table. SharePoint might not be you know, the, the best method, probably a database, but for our report, it's, it's easy to demo for the SharePoint because so you guys can see it and we can show what's happening in real time. And these will filter into a Power BI report. So, you know, typically nothing here unusual. We're just filtering to a Power BI. Now, what happens when a user goes and interacts with this Power BI report? They apply some filters. That's what Power BI does. So this could be row level security filters. It could be us selecting the product banana and us selecting which month. Then this data, the filtered data is passed to Power Apps from Power BI. So this is an important thing to note here. The Power Apps is accessing data directly from the Power BI report. It's not reading from the data sources that the Power BI report is reading directly. Whatever we have loaded and passed into that visual on the page, that's the information that's passed to the Power App. So once we look at a report, we interact. Just like other visuals, just like it works with any visual, we make a bar graph or anything like that. The, information is filtered and passed that visual. It's the same with our Power App visual. And then this is how kind of the magic happens. Once that information, this filter table is passed to Power App, Power App reads it in, in something called Power BI integration. That's the source that it uses. And then this actually saves it back to anywhere we want. In our case, we want to save information back to our adjustment table which then you can see how this works. We have a, a circle here. So we see all the information. We have information from other sources loaded in. We apply some filters. This table, this information gets passed through to the Power App. We then, in the Power App, add some more information. In this case, we added some notes and an adjustment number. The Power App then saves this to a data source. This happens to be you know, the adjustment data source, which is the same one we're using in the Power BI report. Of course, if you're using a SQL table, you can have a direct query, so you wouldn't have to refresh the report every time you wanted to see live updates. And then, of course, it's possible for the Power App to do other stuff. We called a flow to email us. Now, this could be really important. You might not want to email you know, yourself. It could be an email to the manager saying, hey, one of our salespeople has been looking at the data. They've applied some filters. They've made an adjustment. They think that our, our forecasting is wrong and they want to input some information and apply an adjustment. So they can do that directly in the Power BI through the Power App um, interface. And as well as saving this back, it ran a flow. It ran another action. I see just email, but this could be anything. It could be start an alert. It could be an approval process. Really, the power is these three different products interacting together 